The Intergalactic Aerospace Expo is back. This is the 2952 edition hosted by Drake of all ship manufacturers. And I hadn't really planned to do a video, but with so many new ships on the floor, the Drake Corsair, the Cutter, and my first time seeing the Vulture, I kind of wanted to do a first impression video and take you along as I uh, walk through the ships and uh, tell you what I think about them. Let's start with the Cutter, not a ship that I saw coming. What a wonderful little starter ship. Love the look on the outside. She's got a lot of detail, love the VTOL engines, and uh, yeah, real Razor Crest feel for a Mandalorian for those that are familiar. Love the front cockpit. There is so much more detail to it than we see in many of the other ships, I feel like. The uh, yellow tinted glass is awesome. The what looks to be a fuel connector. Lots of detail on the engine too, and yeah, let's go inside and uh, get an idea of all the cool things inside. The cargo bay is really cool when you first walk in. And check out these little yellow windows on the corner there as well. I thought they were really impressive, very immersive, especially when you close the, the, the hangar bay there and you can kind of look out. Thought that was a really cool touch to the, uh, the interior, easy to miss. If we continue on into the next section, we have the living quarters, little comfy bed. Uh, we've got the toilet on the left and uh, if we walk through, we get into the cockpit. Really like this cockpit. If you've seen the Star Citizen Live video, you've noticed as well that there are armor panelings on the windows that you can close. Really cool touch to it. The cockpit itself is nice. What I've noticed with uh, all of these new ships is that there are a lot more buttons to press. And I think this is looking to the future uh, of the interactive system. The uh, text labels are all interactable on top of an actual switch or button. We saw this with the whole A as well. And it's really nice to see it come back. It looks like they're planning to keep on uh, iterating on this and in, in kind of introducing that for all these systems and all the ships. We'll see that on the other ships as well. Really cool ship. I really want one, not just because it's a cool starter ship, but it really sells the RV vibe really well um, without being an RV, but more like a badass solo ship. It's really cool. Let's check out the Vulture. I hadn't seen it. I'm not sure if it was already in game, but I was really happy to take a first look at it. Lots of cool detail on the uh, on the front wing arms or yeah, whatever you want to call them. Uh, this being a salvaging ship, of course, really excited for that gameplay. The interior of this ship is also really cool. You kind of have to step into a ladder to go upstairs and uh, reach the cockpit. It looks like a solo, like a real solo player ship as well. And uh, yeah, it's real snug inside. There's uh, not much room as you walk up to the cockpit. There is a bed. Um, so you can, you know, take a break between salvage jobs. Or go to the toilet if you have to. Really like on this ship the dual stick setup. We see that uh, it's kind of like an industrial look, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I, I always love seeing the, uh, the dual stick setups. Also, the uh, MFD panels on the chair are really nice touch that fold into place. I kind of want to do that with my own setup, like IRL. Um, not many buttons here. Got a few in the chair, but uh, it's all about out of the canopy visibility. What I think is really cool about this ship is that you can exit or enter also from the side. We'll check it out from the external view. You can see it right there. You've got the step ladders on the side and uh, just really like the look of this ship. All the hoses and I guess the, the exterior model has been known for quite a while. So this ship isn't necessarily a surprise to anyone, but it was really nice t checking it out for the first time in, uh, in the flesh. Now here's a really cool touch that I hadn't noticed before. I'm pretty sure this is just a part of the ship, but does that look like an aerodynamic drone to you or what? I mean, come on. If that thing could detach from the ship and if that would be a drone, I would be flying the hell out of that. I don't think it is. It looks more like a radar kind of thing, but very, very sexy. Gets me very excited for uh, drones. All right, let's check out the Corsair then. This really cool asymmetrical winged ship, one that I've been looking forward to for a while. 
always loved the concept art. It does look like we've lost a little bit of clearance on the landing gear, but I guess that must have been necessary for one reason or another. Check out these wings. I noticed it straight away. We've got control services. On the left wing, they look like air brakes almost. And on the right wing, it is an actual moving aileron by the looks of it. Very excited for these to come online, just like on all the other ships. Really cool to see that this will be able to use some kind of control services. Now, looking at the cockpit, I hadn't realized it before, but it looks very similar to the Caterpillar command module. And uh, the command module is actually one ship, let's say it, that I'm really looking forward to fly. So I was curious about how this would compare on the inside. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. Really love on the exterior of this ship, the big ramp that will fit a big vehicle. And uh, just all in all, looks like one of those ships I would take out on an expedition by myself or with a friend and uh, really kind of like enjoy the outskirts of, uh, of space. Love these button panels. Uh, the buttons are individually interactable. I think this is something that CIG is looking to introduce more and more with their ships and probably will do on the older ships too, especially with the new interactable system that's coming. It'll be really nice. Closing the cargo bay is cool. We do see a little bit of weird light switching as everything turns dark, probably some baked lighting things that still need a little bit of work, but looks really nice and uh, Definitely love the hinging system. Good cargo bay, love the size, love the steps up to the next compartment. Let's take a look at the interior. We've got a whole bunch of cool mechanical stuff here. Uh, everything surrounding this central pillar. We've got the gravity generator, lots of loose wires, lots of things that we'll be able to tinker with in the future. We've seen that gravity is something we're gonna be able to turn on and off and to low, so that's gonna be cool. Here on the right side of the ship, we've got some uh, uh, some compartments and a docking bay collar connector thing. Very cool that we've got that as well. You don't need to use the cargo bay. Next compartment, we've got a dining area, a little bit of a kitchen, and everything here uses those same button panels. I really like that. You can go into the bedroom here, for example, and there's three of them and you can turn on the light, turn off the light. And it's just really cool that everything uh, is, la is laid out like that and, and seems to function really well, really like that. Yeah, so three rooms there on the left for, uh, for all the crewmates. And then if we continue on into the cockpit, we actually get first two remote turrets on either side. And then on the left side of the cockpit, we have a sort of captain's quarters, if you will. Tiny little bunk bed in uh, its own room. Really love seeing it. And then there it is. Look at how similar that cockpit is to a Caterpillar. We'll uh, compare it here. So we'll switch over to the Caterpillar command module. Look at how similar that is. Sloped back cockpit, uh, the two chairs in front and behind each other and uh, similar layouts. But look at how much more detail there is on the course here. We've got uh, a million buttons uh, and again everything working with that interactable system where the labels are actually on top of switches and buttons and uh, it begs the question if we'll see that kind of uh, backward compatible uh, uh, optimized on the older ships as well because in comparison the caterpillar now looks a little bland to be honest the mfds are more plain and there are rare, rarely any buttons so i'm just wondering if we will see the caterpillar get some work and some love to make it look just as exciting and and lived in and and it just looks a little bit lower fidelity the rear seat on the Corsair is really cool. I didn't realize this. I was like, where are the MFDs? But you sink through into the chin of the ship. Again, that is so snug. That is so cool. Lots of buttons here as well on the top and it just really looks very immersive. More immersive than the, uh, the Caterpillar, I would say, uh, or even um, the Herald, for example. <laughs> Funny setup with that throttle there and the stick. Just looks really nice. And what's really cool is you can go into the remote turret uh, which I couldn't get working, but you know, it's cool that it is there. And what I really love is that the exit buttons nowadays are actually put on top of an object that makes it a little easier to find, like where am I supposed to go out? That's just really cool to see. And uh, yeah, love the Corsair. I will be doing another video with the Corsair in the future. We're also giving one away, of course. So uh, you can sign up for the Stanton tours that we're doing during the IAE period. And uh, 
stand a chance of winning one. Really cool ship, lots of firepower, and I can't wait to fly it. Uh, I'll be doing that in another video. That is IAE, day one of the expo. Hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did, and I will probably see you in the next one.